Hey guys welcome back so today I have somewhat of like a plant tour for you it's more like a walkthrough because I'm not gonna go through like every single plant and show you every single plant that's living in here I'm more so showing you the, like the highlights and the low lights and how I have things set up in here the reason being a little bit of a backstory I it's Monday right now I'm filming this I just came off of like the best weekend like we freaking killed that weekend it was so good and I want every weekend to be like that now. Like that has now set the standard for all weekends going forward. It was perfect. Like we had, my boyfriend and I, we had like a very even mixture of productivity, just getting stuff done around this house that has been being put off for too long. Like we're just setting up a little coffee bar in our kitchen with an espresso machine. We've got a grinder coming in. We went to Costco, we started organizing our basement of where like all these stuff gets stored. I baked my first sourdough loaf and it turned out so well and I'm just like on this high. So I'm coming into this week with a lot of like positive and uh, rejuvenated energy. And as I'm sitting in my plant room this morning, I'm just like, I'm feeling like there's some hardcore editing that needs to happen. There's too many plants. There's too many plants, they're getting too big. I also have plants coming in from the States when Charmaine gets back from California. I have some more plants coming in that I need to find space for. So my hope is that in taking you through this plant room, I will be able to like vocalize my thoughts and hopefully by the end of it, I'll have like, you know, jump-started the creative juices and maybe knowing what I wanna do with my collection. I do know I need to get rid of some plants. I do need to like maybe chop some leaves back just to make the plant take up less space something spring is now upon us i think the official first day of spring is in a matter of days i'm leaving the spring plant prep pretty late spring plant spring plant prep spring plant prep but it's better late than ever um, it's not like my plants don't grow in the winter they grow quite a lot so it's not i don't think going to be a huge burst of growth once spring is here but anyway even if i don't have like a revelation some sort of mental breakthrough at the very least we'll have somewhat of a plant tour and i also want to make sure i talk about my grow lights and just how i have them like set up because over the past few months, I've been noticing more and more people asking me how I have my grow light situated in relation to the plant, just to make the leaves face forward. I think it's mainly because I've been posting more photos of my tent and just when the leaves face forward, it just looks a lot fuller, more like a lush jungle. So I will talk about that. Yeah, I'll take you through the room. Sometimes I'll just be sitting down because the plants are too hard to like show you while holding the camera. But anyways, that's that's the video. Okay, so this is the kind of propagation corner. I have a little exo here for like larger propagations or like little plants I just don't really have space for. And I also have to remember that when I have the mic pointing at my mouth so close, I need to, I need to be quiet. Sometimes when I get excited though, I start to shout. So just apologies in advance. This thing is getting a little bit empty because just a lot of plants got sold that were in here. This little hetero is almost ready for sale, just pushed out a new leaf. So once this new leaf comes out, I'm gonna chop this leaf off because it has like really old spider mite damage on it. And I just don't want that on the new plant, but there's no spider mites on it anymore. It's been treated very vigorously. I also have three personal plants in here. My Dioscori Discolor, which actually, spoiler alert, I'm going to get rid of. It's just too much. It grows too fast and like, I just, I, I don't think that it's the plant for me when it grows so fast and then, like it's so invasive. So what I'm going to do with this plant is I'm going to like chop it up into like a couple node cuttings, just pop them into a little cup of moss with a lid on top and that will just kind of root in there. Once they start growing, I'm going to sell them probably. Another one is my Burly Marks Fantasy. Um, this one was potted up around Christmas time. It started growing. It's not growing really fast, but hopefully in like the next few months, it'll start to size up. And then another personal plant this is my ficus velosa which actually <laughs> needs a water it's growing so fast and i just can't keep up with the propagations so i think what i'm actually going to do is chop it back down to here 
and propagate it again. I have two little cups of them. They're taking quite a long time to root because I didn't cover these cups, but this one's actually started growing. But my plan for this, I don't actually know. I might actually get rid of this EXO and sell it because what I ideally like to do is get another shelf that's like really tall. So like comes up to here at least. And it'll just be domes and domes and domes for all the seedlings that I've got brewing. That's like my long-term plan. I have other plans for like different uh, shelves in this room because I moved a lot of substrate up here. So I want a shelf to be able to store all my bins and bins and bins of substrate. So I can do a lot more repotting in here. So that maybe is the plan in the spring is to get rid of this XO. I'll just need to find somewhere else to grow like the Burley Marks Fantasy and the Ficus Velosa. And then down here are some props and some personal plants actually. Let me pop you down while I show you. A couple of exciting plants actually. This little forgetty eye. Oh no, not this one. <laughs> this one. This one is a cutting of a dark form forgetty eye. I know the lighting sucks. Is this any better? Kind of. So this is a dark form forgetty eye that I got from, well, like it was from my friend Erin. She was purging a lot of anthuriums from her tent. She's kind of like breaking down her tent, but last year she got rid of some more anthuriums. And this one I took a bottom cutting of and it's finally sprouted and I took one home. Lauren has the top cutting, but I just want to show you this dark forgetty eye. It's like the perfect one. It's so bullet, so puffy, so dark, and I'm so excited to have this one. And this is going to be like a flowering size specimen by the end of spring, I'm sure, because the forgetty eyes flower very, very young. So um, yeah, this one lives in the dome right now. This one is another dark forgetty eye. This is just a prop from one of mine. Refocus. This one just popped two leaves and once they expand, it's going to be ready for sale maybe in the next couple of weeks. Um, I don't know if I showed, oh, I did show you. Did I show you this? This is Anthuria Muhu's first night. This was from Amanda and I got a little cutting of it from Charmaine. So Charmaine has the bigger or like the top of the plant. And this was a little stump that sprouted. And I think it's going to be ready for a repot. Like it hasn't rooted tremendously. Like it's kind of like this. I'm waiting for more roots to pop out of the new stem here, but I think I want to get it into like um, one of these style pots, these like square drainage pots. Maybe I'll put it in my tent. I know it doesn't need to grow in this dome. It's probably too close to the light because you can see it's kind of getting a little bit chlorotic, but it's very cute and I'm very excited for this to get big because it's such a beautiful plant. I'll put a photo here of what a more mature Woohoo's First Night looks like. And I haven't shown you this since um, it was just like a stump. But this one is Red Crystal Port. I have a big one, but that one is um, different. Charmaine's is so cute. I'm gonna put a photo right here. It's so freaking cute. The lobes are really short. They're really fat. And it's more of like a, just like a heart shape where the top of the plant is like wider than the bottom of the plant. So this is a little stump. It's grown two leaves and actually has another growth point activated. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but it's right on the top above the activated node that's growing these two leaves. And then other than that, it's just like a bunch of props. Like I have serpents, I think I have Jose Bono, Gloriosum. What's this? Oh, this is my Diablo Ents. Are you growing yet? Oh, you're so slow. I can see the growth point is active right here, but it's gonna be a while before this one pushes out a leaf. And then down here, more props. I chopped up my Florida ghost, not my Florida ghost, my Florida beauty. I, I'm not going to keep it anymore. I've decided the Florida family plants, they just grow too big, too fast, and they get too much EFN. So I'm, I'm just not about that life anymore. So I chopped it up into pieces. Um, I don't see any new roots. This was like last week, so I don't expect anything so far, but there's like the top cutting here. It's very highly variegated. Like this leaf is fully variegated minus this little bit of green here. And I just got it in water. It hasn't started rooting yet, I don't think. Nope. I got like philodendron rio, variegated pederaceum. This is my mother plant. Or like, no, not my mother plant. My pot that I'm starting to grow out. It actually pushed out its first leaf. It's so cute. I'm just waiting for it to turn into this like full trailing pot because I have one, two, three, four, five cuttings in here. My goal is to have like a nice trailing thing of it and I'll grow it in my living room. 
it's like it's nicely rooted in here though it just needs a little bit more light to get bushy and grow um yeah nothing nothing too exciting oh one last thing though this is my fry deck that i got from my friend jesse let me pull it out so i can show you because when i first got it it was just this leaf and it was like green on green and came from his white variegated fry deck and my my personal fry deck has been greener at times when i had it in lower light and once i get into higher light it turns white again so i'm trying to see if like it will stay green on green and it pushed out this leaf and it's less variegation but it is still green on green there's green here there's some like mottled marbly green down here this one is now fully hardened and it's still like lime green so i'm very curious to see if it will stay green on green because i think that's very cute but i'm just going to keep it here to see if the higher light will make it turn white because if it stays green on green that'll be like a really nice addition to my alopecia collection and now we're at the tent it is very full right now like i don't i just don't know when i show you close up of some of these plants they're getting way too big for the tent and i'm really concerned luckily we're at spring so i could be moving stuff out but a little sneak peek over here it is pretty full here too so i'm gonna need to be getting rid of some plants here i think either moving to my living room selling them chopping them back so quick little just recap of my grow light situations i have only marina bars in here they're the 10 watt these are the yellow warm ones that don't really read yellow like you can see it reads pretty white there are seven bars in here in total so you can see there's two here and then at the front of the bars i have one vertically pointing in and then the same thing on this side so that's four so far another one here pointing at this shelf another one here pointing at that shelf and then I have one kind of just like velcro tied here diagonally just to keep this little like i think of this as like my foyer like my welcome area when i get baby plants like there's small plants there's propagations down here basically any new baby plant i get usually gets shoved there first that's kind of like a buffer zone so it's quite a lot of light and you'll see that like here i have them right at the front of the shelf this also i believe helps quite a bit to get leaves facing this way not to mention the walls of the tent are reflective so when i close this door it's reflecting off the front wall straight back at the leaves so you end up with like leaves facing forward which is exactly what i want it's exactly what i was hoping for like i know a tent is not that aesthetically pleasing but to me this is very pleasing when i open the tent and like i just see all these leaves facing me it really does feel like you're kind of opening a like a present every time you open it this like warm air comes out and you can look at new growth it's just like such a joyful thing i know tents aren't for everybody but i i personally i could not live without this tent this is the brand of the tent i don't think they are selling on amazon anymore i got this on amazon like a few years ago but one thing to consider if you're thinking about getting a tent is that like look at how wide this door is i didn't realize this until lauren pointed this out this comes out really far because she has a mars hydro tent and i think it only comes out like here it cuts off a little bit earlier so you kind of lose a bit of this like width because when i take a photo of this this tent looks probably bigger than it actually is it's only four by two so it's four feet wide and two feet deep and it's five feet tall and it's exactly the same size as her tent but my tent just feels a lot bigger and i'm pretty sure it is because of how wide this opening is so just something to consider this is only like a 75 dollars tent so it wasn't anything crazy but it has everything i need it has also like the kind of drip tray at the bottom this like protective little thing so you don't have like water leaking onto your floors it has the reflective walls i like the reflective one better than the white it also has a viewing window on the door it really has everything i need and when i look at this tent this is where i most desperately want to clear some space i just have like my favorite plants in here so it's the most difficult for me to try to like lose any of these plants but let's give it a shot this one here i might sell this one is a pap port and i got this from amanda I, i'm either gonna sell it or i might chop it back because if you can see the stem is quite long i know it's not focusing on the stem but you can kind of see how long it is so i might 
chop it and propagate it and just sell the top cutting and start back over with a stump. I'm not really sure. Quick little update for this like Ace Lux. I repotted this fairly recent in a video and the new leaf hardened off quite big. And I was pretty pleasantly surprised because it was just an emergent leaf when I repotted it. So I thought maybe in repotting it, it will stunt the expansion of the leaf, but it's not. But it is getting a little bit bleached right here. Can't forget Dark Phoenix. She is now emerging from her little spathy spathe. Um, I have the pollen already that I'm going to pollinate this with. It's in my freezer and I'm so excited to finally pollinate this thing. It's unfortunate that the biggest leaf is over there. It's facing the wall. And I don't really want to rotate it. So I'm just gonna have to hope that the next leaf comes in this way. Another plant that's flowering right now is my Carla Bevep. It's the second flower. This leaf got really banged up. This is the newest leaf. It's not rooting uh, the best. Like I'm looking at the roots and it just doesn't have like roots everywhere, um, which is just kind of strange because it's in tree fern soil. Everything else does so well in it. My Carla does really well in it, but it does have the tiniest flower of all time poking out. Obviously I'm not gonna pollinate it. It's too weak of a plant, but uh, maybe there's something like another small inflow I can throw it on. Another plant I've been really liking, I showed this also really recently, but my Diabloens is so cute. And it's growing so well and it really loves tree fern soil. I don't know if it'll focus, but it really likes tree fern soil. My Novelty G Ace, this is also from Amanda, is doing really well. It bounced back with this leaf, which is just beautiful. This is such a nice plant. It's not an Ace of Spades. It comes from Hawaii from the nursery Novelty G. And it always has kind of like a wavy look. It's very like smooth and flat and has really nice colors. And I'm really excited for this one to get big because it's such such a pretty plant and every leaf presents a little bit differently. It's like very variable in how it shows. And you can see that even though it's not a bumpy bolate kind of texture, it's very smooth. It does have like nice, like fine veining and it looks super velvety. Like, you know how sometimes velvet anthurium can kind of present slightly shiny? This one is very, very, very matte. Okay, so this is the most problematic shelf. These plants are getting too big. Not the ones at the front, those two at the back. Let me just move some plants out, but I'm going to show you this one. It's so freaking pretty. This is NSC Carla, which was contaminated with probably papillolamnum. The camera is not picking up its colors. Looking so red on the camera. Hold on. I just moved the light a little bit. No, it's still looking red in person. Let me put a photo here of what it actually looks like. It's like got a purple shift. It's got this deep, like blue toned purple. Maybe if I show it to you on a different angle. Nope still looks red. It's also been really liking tree fern soil. I always forget when I say tree fern soil, I don't always explain the mix, but tree fern soil, I don't mean just tree fern. I mean tree fern fiber mixed with like my aeroid mix, which is like a peat base with like a lot of amendments. So it's just way easier for me to say tree fern soil, but it's not just tree fern. This Carla Beast has popped another leaf and she's gonna be beautiful. I really wanna open this petiolar sheep to see if it's in caterpillar yet, but I just don't want to until this is a little bit bigger. She is rooting and ready to go. This, um, ooh, yay, okay, thank God. This is Dark Phoenix Ralph Lyon and Fort Sherman from Cartel Down. I got this oh, last year. It was one of the seedlings that I got, and this one has probably been the most vigorous grower. This is the top cutting. I took two cuttings off of it. One I'm gonna probably just grow out a little bit and sell later. One I gave to Jing for her birthday. Um, but I was really worried that this one wasn't rooting as fast as I was expecting it to, but it has, thank God. You can see two little yellow tip roots here, but it didn't actually take to the pond as quickly as I thought it would, and I potted it specifically in pond because of like the dark phoenix genes in it and it was in pond previously and it did really well in pond um but it is rooting it's accepting the substrate but it wasn't like just taking over the pot immediately which is a little bit strange my ace of spades it's beautiful let me bring it out so you can see it up close it's getting a little bit bleached but thankfully the newest leaf came out right in the middle so it looks a lot nicer than it did before because it was just like that before now she's looking a lot more balanced this leaf is actually not much of an upside compared to the last leaf, this leaf here, which tells me that it is ready for an upsize. The roots are pretty full in here. It doesn't have like the huge thick noodly roots. It's like 
a little bit more on the thin side, but it is, it is quite full in here. So it is ready for the big round. I think it's like an eight inch pot, nine inch pot. Because if I look at this leaf, it's pretty much done hardening off. Oh, look at that texture. Oh, it's so pretty. But it's really not much bigger than the leaf before it. I was expecting bigger, to be honest. So at this point is where I would be upsizing the pot. At that point, I'm gonna chop this leaf off. I'm gonna chop this leaf off. Yeah, I'm just gonna be left with this leaf. Obviously this leaf, this leaf, and maybe this little one at the back right here. But I do want to get this done before this leaf like hardens off and starts bleaching because right now, where it is right now, it is getting a little bit too close to this light. And this leaf actually used to be more bleached, but it started to turn away from the light and it's not really bleached anymore. You can kind of see how it's turning down. So honestly, this cannot be it's like long-term place anymore while i would love to grow my ace in this tent i just don't know where it could possibly live where it's not going to get bleached and it has a space to grow because it is getting pretty big like i would love to grow this on my shelf i probably will have to in spring when i start to move things around i'll have to clear some space on that shelf and this would probably be like a top container to move over there but you can see how like with that gone there's so much space for something else another plant look at this one you see how it's like hit the top of the shelf? This I haven't shown in a while and it's gotten quite big. This is my Anthurium Carib Queen. I'm actually gonna take this opportunity to cut some leaves off. So I'm just gonna cut this yellowing leaf off. Not because it's healthier for the plant, it's because I don't wanna look at it anymore. It's actually not healthier for the plant. Yeah, this leaf was quite a big upsize from the one before it. The one before it, inexplicably kind of before it was a hole, it was brown. It was brown when it was still like a rolled up leaf when it was emerging. And I was like really confused. Like, did it get a bunch of water on it? Did it get attacked by pests? Was it the predatory mites that ate it? I wasn't sure, but I couldn't see spider mite damage on the leaf. It just looks mechanical, but why was it browning off while it was still a rolled up emergent leaf? But it didn't spread. It just kind of died disappeared and now it's just a hole and i've never had like root rot issues not knock on wood amanda i got this plant from amanda this is like a jabonini hybrid of dressleri and rugulosum she has this one and the coca queen so coca queen is forgettii rugulosum she finds that one more easygoing than this one which is dressleri rugulosum but i find it really easygoing but it's probably because i'm growing in a tent and she's growing it out in ambient conditions but this one also has like such a nice it's not velvet but it's not got the gloss of rugulosum, it's somewhere in between, but it has kind of the shape and veining of Dreseri, just minus the pillowiness. But it's very rugulosum heavy, and I'm actually very impressed that it did this big upsize, but now I don't know where to grow it because I don't want to grow it out in ambient conditions. It's because if Amanda can't grow it like easily in ambient, which she can grow, she grows like Dreseri, she grows Carla, she grows a lot of like high ticket plants out in her living room. If she finds this finicky in ambient conditions, there's no way in hell that I can grow this ambient conditions. I might eventually move it into this welcome area corner. I can just shuffle things around. This one will have a lot more vertical height to grow because this one was getting like a little bit bent on the top, but I really haven't shown this for a while and it's doing really well for anyone who might be wondering. And that brings us to the bottom, which is pretty full. One plant I know can come out is this one. This one is Tofugetii. So it's a cross between that plant and this dark Fugetii here. I think I'm just going to take him out right now. Here's a new plant that I just got. This is from Jing, but it was originally from Jose. Look at this cute new leaf. This one is Anthurium X1, crossed with X1. So Jing bought Jose's mother plant. She chopped it into a few pieces. I got a stump and she's got another cutting for Charmaine when she comes back from California. I don't know why she potted it in such a big <laughs> wide container. Once this leaf hardens off, I am going to get it into probably this size pot and I'll just use this as like a reservoir thing. It's in tree fern, looks like tree fern soil. I'm very excited for this one though. Like I was like, please somebody buy it when it was on sale like Jose had brought it to a live sale and I had been financially tapped out because I had bought a Carla which you're gonna see in just a second 
but I'm very excited for this one. Owen, if you're watching, this is your Wen Lingerai. I'm going to be shipping this little prop to him in the next two weeks or so. If you don't know Owen, he is growing plants. There's nobody who loves Wen Lingerai more than him. It's just the straight fact. But it has two growth points. One is kind of actually growing into the substrate, which is annoying. I don't know if I can do anything about it, honestly, unless I just dig out some soil here. It's actually not even soil. This is just tree fern and perlite and pond. But this is going to go soon. This is another tofu giddy eye. Look how different it looks. So much silverier than the other one. It doesn't really have as much of a red sinus. It does have a little bit of red sinus. This one also really enjoys tree fern soil. This is Red Crystal Lux that I repotted pretty recently. Just put out a new leaf and the roots, oh my gosh. This is like, this is what I feel like is maybe two to three weeks of root growth in tree fern soil. On the plus side though, this one can also live outside of the tent. So it doesn't need to live in here long term. So I will have space for a larger pot, but for now, while it lives here, it, I can't put it into a bigger pot. Look at this beauty. I love her so much. This is Meg. Magnificum Crystallinum crossed with Carla Blackie and this is from Amanda and it's beautiful, it's stunning, it's so dark. She has a little moss mushroom <laughs> forest floor growing in here. It's so cute. I know I'm shouting, I'm starting to shout. I'm getting really excited. I actually feel like she might flower for me by the summertime and I'm very excited about it. Oh my gosh, it just, this is so cute. This moss, every few weeks or so, a whole bunch of mushrooms will pop up and then they'll release their spores. That's why the petioles look so dusty. It's because of all the spores that they release and it just grows more mushrooms and I just leave it be. But the roots are very happy here. I might actually, I'm going to chop this leaf off. Please don't come for me in the comments saying that you shouldn't chop leaves off. I know you shouldn't chop leaves off. I know it's not helping the plant, but it's helping me. My camera battery is about to die, but really quick. This is my, one of my babies. This is a like what I call the nearly dark forgetty eye because it's a almost fully dark form crossed with a dark form or like the without silver form. So this is one of the bigger ones that I kept. Here's a new leaf here. That's what a new leaf looks like. It's still expanding. But this one I pollinated with dark form forgetty eye. So I got another batch of dark forgetty eyes coming. And I know some people have been asking, but this one is a very like round, cute one. And then this one is my Papillolanum RA5. This one's from Amanda. Let me show you the newest leaf it's got like cute overlapping lobes it's really round it's super bumpy and bullate and this one has been pollinated i'm just like is it has it taken it looks kind of fat on the bottom compared to the top i don't know if you can tell it's like more swollen down here and i didn't have enough pollen to do the whole thing so it would have only come on focus it would have only been the bottom of half i think that would be pollinated it's having a really hard time focusing on it, so I can't get any closer. But it does kind of look like it might have taken. I am just crossing my fingers and my toes that it's pollinated. And it was pollinated by this guy, which is not the healthiest right now. I need to repot this as soon as I finish filming. But this is Fort Sherman Ralph Linum. So it will be RA5 crossed with this guy. And hopefully we'll get, like, you know, a somewhat decent uh, seed batch out of it. This one is in pond and it is like, it's been living with me long enough that I feel like it's ready to go into tree fern soil and it's finished flowering, which is why I didn't uh, repot it right as soon as I got it. Cause I wanted to make sure that the flower developed okay. And it has two growth points. It has one at the top and a little offset at the bottom. It's moving really slowly though, which is why I feel like if I repot it might kind of boost it a little bit, but that's one thing I'm going to repot this actually. I'm gonna repot this into tree fern soil and then I'm gonna swap places with the Carib Queen so the Carib Queen can live here. This one doesn't need quite as much height. Okay, now I'm gonna charge my battery. I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Where was I? I think I was just talking about the PAP, Fort Sherman. Okay, yes, tofu. Tofu's here. This is Jing's plant. This one just finished producing pollen. I've already collected the pollen. It's in my freezer. I missed the window on pollinating this. This was supposed to go with my dark forgetty eye. So we were going to do tofu forgetty eye part two, but it never produced stigmatic fluid. So I wasn't sure if it was receptive and then it just started producing pollen. So I missed it. But luckily 
She's got another inflow coming in, also another leaf coming in. So it's gonna live there for a while. I would like to get tofu getty eye done again. So I have my dark for getty eye over on the right side, which is also flowering, but it's a little bit farther behind. So it's going to match up again. Like this one's gonna be receptive first before forgetty eye. But then if it doesn't produce stigmatic fluid again, then I'm gonna have to put the frozen tofu pull in onto the dark forgetty eye if that makes sense but either way i feel like this one would also be cute to pollinate with my king of spades because somebody told me in the comments that like tofu reminds them of king of spades and i never ever thought of it that way i think maybe this leaf kind of because it is deformed and it looks so round but this leaf I don't know it doesn't read to me like king of spades but then like once they said it now i kind of see it so i'm thinking like maybe my king of spades once it produces pollen might be a good match for this one who knows maybe we can get two separate uh, hybrids out of it so if i pollinate this one i'm gonna keep it and grow out the berries and then return the whole plant and the half of the berries to jing i need to show you this plant though oh my gosh this leaf is stunning can't tell this is Carla Blackier. This is Woo 2 Self. This one I got from Jose. This one is Woo 1 from Woohoo Tropicals. This one Jose got as a tiny little baby and it's oh my gosh it's just so so pretty. The venation is so thick and just how vertical it is, how bright. It's such a nice one. I am so glad I bought this one. Like I have zero regrets. I was not financially equipped to be buying Carla's. I'm still not financially equipped to be buying Carla's, but I do not regret getting this one because it's going to be so nice and it has really like tree fern soil. I feel like it's maybe a little bit like ambitious to hope that it grows as huge as my other one did in such a little time because this one looks like it's still got a little ways to go. It'll be bigger than this last leaf, but I don't know if it's going to be quite as like vigorous as my other one. Speaking of cute, this is Anthurium HU or King of Space cross with Red Crystallinum. This one is from Cartel Down. And this one has been like not a vigorous fast grower for me. It hasn't really sized up quickly. Like it's been sizing up very incrementally. It has, I believe, enjoyed tree fern soil. There's a good amount of roots in there. The roots do seem healthy. I'm not really sure why it's taking so long to size up, but it is very cute. Like it's getting a lot of the red crystallinum venation, but it's quite round as well. Oh, I wanted to show you this one. This one I got from Jose. He gave this to me as just like a stick with two growth points. So there's an active one down here and then the one that this leaf grew out of. And he wasn't sure what it was. Like I, I think he knows what it is somewhere he'll just have to dig back on his like messages but he bought this from the states um from a girl named becky if you're in the anthurium groups you probably would have heard her name before this is some sort of happy and i don't know what it is but this first leaf grew out and it's so cute the quilting the color the venation is so nice i'm really excited to see this one grow bigger sorry i just had to adjust it in my hand for a second this one has no roots it is just a stick in tree fern. I had a dome and I took the dome off when the leaf came out. It should be rooting out of the new stem soon, but I'm going to leave it in there. I'm not going to separate those two growth points until they both have its own root system. Isn't that just adorable? Oh yeah, that color. It's the blue shift with the green and it's so dark and so bumpy, but since it has no roots, it's just like not showing its true shape and characteristics i believe like i think you get a bit of like a wonky growth when you have no roots so you can see some of it but it's just like a little bit too deformed to tell what it is but i just think it's so adorable it's such a nice it's like a deformed classic love heart shape other than that not much going on here my red crystallinum still being <laughs> like this and i also need to do a clean like i cannot stand this this stuff. I need to like scrape it up and give it a good clean. Okay, next up, I'm going to show you this area, except I'm going to take away this stand, but I just want you to memorize where these two mother lights are. They're normally on. I've turned them off because they cast weird reflections and stuff, but just going back to like making plants face outwards, just remember where these lights are. This one on the left points directly at that shelf. This one on the right points directly like a 90 degree angle towards this big shelf. I just want to show you this shelf. Okay, this used to be, it's not the healthiest looking shelf because like I've been dealing with spider mites and stuff, but this was a lot like 
emptier at the beginning of winter and now it's really filling out like the leaves are getting bigger but you'll notice that like things tend to face this way rather than pointing up towards the shelf because you can see these forgetty eyes there's a grow light above it but they're facing this way because of the mother lights and that's really why i wanted mother lights in the first place and i was really lucky that they decided to sponsor me with lights so i didn't purchase these myself but they have been so nice to grow plants with i've mentioned this in the past but like some velvet anthuriums end up being super black because this is not the color of the forgetti eye when i first got this is so much spider mite damage but this was like just like a regular greenish forgetti eye but look how black it is it'll just tilt you up towards the light so you can actually see this is like super black this one here is what tropicals was selling as um, sp velvet so originally they were selling it as ace forgetti eye and I think they decided it wasn't actually an ace forgetti eye so some sort of forgetti eye hybrid this leaf was grown inside of my tent let me get rid of this for you so it's pretty dark but you can see how green it is this was grown under barina lights and it was fully hardened inside my tent but this leaf that was grown on this shelf because it got too big for my tent is really black in comparison my wenli leaf is kind of in the way but you can kind of see the color difference here greener blacker same for this one this one was really green when i first got it and then grown on the shelf it's gotten really black it's just like a more like black green you know so i've been enjoying that but the main purpose of the mother lights was to get it to point this way the shelf normally looks way more lit up than this because the mother lights are usually pointing straight at them it looks right now like they're growing the dark i promise you they are not um but yeah without the lights i guarantee you they're not going to be facing out especially these plants down here they're going to be like lifting those leaves up towards the light but if possible like i have two bars on each shelf if possible i actually don't know why i didn't put it right up to the edge i should have put it right up to here but it's a little bit back if i didn't have the mother lights at all i would just put them right up to the front and push the plants a little bit back so that they're sensing that the light is in front of them so they'll be a little bit more vertical but i definitely feel like the mother lights because they're stronger they are out competing those barina lights so the plants are favoring the mother lights over the barinas unless of course it's the plants like back here this one is vag lux from north shore tropicals it has the most beautiful like brownie like sometimes it's like pinky, silvery, like a metallic looking velvet. It's so pretty. Anyways, I have an affiliate link for Mother Lights. It's always linked in my description. You, you can use it, you cannot use it. Um, but if you have a spot where you have a planty shelf where you really want leaves facing forward and you don't have a way to have a light source right in front of the leaves, this would be the way I would do it. My Wenli, this is the first leaf it grew out in ambient conditions and it's perfect it's so big and then I chopped it and it started flowering again it rooted really well by the way this is tree fern soil it has really taken to the substrate and it started flowering again there's one inflow here is another inflow I have pollen from this one saved in the freezer so I don't know I maybe I have two shots at making when lingerie I don't think it's a very easy plant to get to pollinate and i know the seeds on wenlies are like tiny they're like the size of salt like sea salt so they're really hard to harvest as well but i'm gonna try because this is a really cool wenli and i think um it's not quite the same as other ones i don't know if like this is up a lot of people's alleys because it's like really waxy and thick and it's not as like dimply and velvety or dark as a lot of wenlies but if you like strap leaves like the way that wenlies grow are nicer like way nicer to me than like vitarifolium baker eye like other strap leaf anthuriums and they're getting really accessible so i'm gonna try my best to get some wenli babies going look at this queen leaf grown in ambient conditions <laughs> she's sizing up um i got some russo plant collars from charmaine she did a little sponsorship with them so i'm going to actually like extend this so i'm basically going to build a bunch of collars up here um maybe try to keep it in this pot a little bit longer because i just don't really have anything bigger than this it's either that or make a moss pool but i'm leaning towards the pot extenders because the pot extenders are just a little bit easier to water i just water it in here first let it soak through and then i go around here so i'm probably not going to do it in this video but my plan is to take every single plant off this shelf 
clean it just in case there are like spider mites living here. It's been so much better, honestly, since I started using beneficials. These are the beneficials that I use, the co copper spiggle ultimites. Like there are definitely leaves that emerge and grow without any spider mite damage. What you see here is not spider mite damage. It's just like dried up mucilage from the leaf, but it's like basically lubricant for the leaf. There's some up here, but none of that is spider mite damage. But then there are leaves like this that have been growing with spider mite damage. So it's like coming and going. And I feel like if I took everything off and I just clean the shelves, clean every single plant in the shower, I'm able to like just reset this outdoor area, outdoor <laughs> ambient area for spring, I guess. I'm about to show you my Magnificum cross with Ace of Spades. Hello. It's freaking massive. Look at it. And it's still so floppy. These are the leaves that came before it. What's the last leaf? The last leaf would have been this one. And this is just gargantuan. In fairness though, I did chop off, I think at least one leaf. There's a leaf that came before this. You'll be able to see the petiole here. I chopped it off because it got hit with spider mites so badly. So then I just like, I wiped off all the older leaves that wouldn't get burned by pesticide. And then I applied predatory mites and this leaf emerged without spider mite damage. I am so happy. I am so shocked that this one got so big and it still has quite a ways to go, I think. I wish I had better light to show you, but this is how she looks. It's humongous. Also this Nigrolaminum GG. I bought this one last year as like a very wide sinus one because it looks like it looks like a butterfly. It's so cute, but it's so much happier in tree fern soil than it was in pond, probably because I kept underwatering it in pond. I don't think it was like necessarily the pond. It was just my watering habits. But what I really wanted to show you, I forgot to show you this in the last video, my last plant room hangout, but my politiflorum, this one is the narrow one. It pushed such a long, long leaf. Look at that. It's it's outgrown this exo because it hits the bottom now and I had to like kind of move it like this and sit it on top of this plant. And in doing so, I ripped it a little bit, but this one was such a nice, nice upsize and it's still retaining like the super narrow leaf. And then it pushed out this one and it's still just a rolled up taquito and it's so long. This one's going to be even longer than that one. I'm so excited, except that I don't want to move it out of here. This is like, to me, this is like my politiflorum spot. Like my old politiflorum was so happy there until it outgrew it. And then this one is so happy there, but now it's getting too long. I'm contemplating selling my original politiflorum and only keeping this narrow one. I don't know. It's just something I'm wrestling with right now. My dark form queen, I mean, it's banged up. <laughs> She's doing really well here. She loved the transition from pond to tree fern soil. Um, I keep a little bit of a reservoir there. I just keep her a little bit more swampy. This is because <laughs> she fell off. She fell off her little perch and got all banged up, but she's happy. This elbow that Lauren gave me for my birthday last year is doing so good. She hasn't reverted. She's grown so well. She's rooted immensely into that pole. It's really awkward of an angle I've got you in right now. I have like my face stuffed up against crystallinum. It's very uncomfortable. But I just want to show you that she is really, really rooted into that pole. This is the worst camera work. Oh my God. In here, nothing super special. As usual, the Patricia is putting out a beautiful leaf. She's just wonderful. She's so good. But I am very, very concerned for when it hits the top because I don't know where I'm going to grow her because she's really, really big. My subsignatum pappy. This one's from Amanda. Put out a beautiful leaf. I chopped all the other leaves off. I moved it upwards a little bit. You can see that it's elevated on a, a glass vessel just to give it a little bit more light. And she seemed a lot happier than she was before. She wasn't really sizing up very much. This leaf was really pretty, but um, she started immediately growing much faster when I raised it a little bit more. My other Wenli just pushed a new leaf too. I always thought that Wenlingeri always had like a orangey bronzy emergent leaf, but this one is always green. So I'm wondering if it's like a maturity thing. It might be a maturity thing actually. And now we're on the bottom level. This is the shelf. The shelf that bothers me constantly all the time. Like I move things around, it looks good, and then it doesn't look good after a while. One thing I know I for sure want to do is I want to move my heterocraspidon, my philodendron heterocraspidon, away to my guest bedroom. 
I'd want this area to be just anthuriums. I don't know what I will replace it with. Maybe my Ace of Spades? I'm not sure yet because like my Ace of Spades does bleach pretty easily. So it might be enough space here for it. I just want to make sure that like I clean everything really, really well. No spider mites. And then I put my Ace of Spades there. But yeah, a few quick updates. This Indomag, this big guy, I said I wasn't going to breed with it anymore for a while, but then I just, I don't know, I just YOLO'd. It put out a humongous inflow. Like, look at the size of that. So I just threw Dark Forgetty Eye pollen on it. This one here. I honestly, I probably would have preferred a Silvery Forgetty Eye pollen just to kind of highlight the silver. But that's kind of what I did last time. So just trying out something new. Maybe it'll be nice and dark. This King of Spades, this is the inflow. She's receptive now, but I don't want to pollinate her because I think King of Spades by all accounts, does not produce very good yields. So you'll get like five seeds out of it. So I'm just going to collect the pollen and save it for something else. But this new leaf is so derpy looking. Why is this forehead so big? And the petiole is so short. Like it's just that. There's something funky going on with it. I think it's spider mites, to be honest. It's not looking the super healthiest, but it's... <laughs> It's still a cute King of Spades leaf. It gets super round, but um, it's not the healthiest this has ever been, which is kind of sad. I don't know if it's like kind of wonky because it's putting out an inflow and it's just not sure where to direct the hormones and the nutrients. The only reason I'm sad about it is because this plant grows so slow. So I don't even know if it's going to put out another leaf this year. So every leaf that this plant grows like needs to count and this one is not looking its best. Some of you might recognize this plant. This is not my plant. This is Charmaine's plant. I'm just babysitting her. This is Anthurium Brielle. So that's a dock block hybrid that looks a lot like Crystal Hope, except something interesting is just like, it's very square. You know what I mean? It's kind of like Minecraft Crystal Hope. These lobes are really like squared off at the top and the sides I find are very square. Like it's not like a rounded heart shape. I'm trying to like show you this leaf with one hand, but anyway, She's growing berries. Um, it also has another inflow, which has not yet become receptive, but I'm not going to pollinate it. She said I could collect the pollen for something else. I just don't know what I would use it for, but she didn't trust Vince to stay on top of the watering for this one. So I'm holding on to it while she's in California and I'll give it back to her when she's back. But anyway, this one is um, here because of that, but also because the pollen donor was me and the pollen for this one was this black crystallinum hear me out <laughs> it's very ugly right now it doesn't get enough light and it got hit with spider mites and it was living in pond in a self-watering pot that i always let dry out because the meter was always showing water when it was actually super dry let me bring it down so you can see it properly so this one is now potted into tree fern soil and it likes it a lot better than the pond it had a lot of like dry rot roots when i unpotted it but it's a really nice dark silvery crystallinum with the really clean veins. Just ignore all the damage. She is bouncing back. It actually needs water. It's not like super dry, but it is approaching dry. But she's working on a leaf. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't have spider mites. So yeah, this is the pollen donor to this one. And I think it's just going to be like cute, silvery, sparkly, crystally babies. So that's kind of like my walkthrough of the highlights and the lowlights. I didn't show you every single plant, but I've just literally just now made the executive decision since I was looking at the timestamp on the footage and it wasn't a lot of footage and I wanted to make a little bit of a longer video so I'm going to take my Fort Sherman rough linum we're gonna go downstairs I want to repot it because that's like probably my most um, not emergency uh urgent repot to do I mentioned before that's an investment plant like I co-own that one with Charmaine so I really want to make sure that it's set up to grow a lot faster than it is right now. I probably will cut off some of the older leaves. I'm not really sure. So we're going to take that downstairs. So I'll see you there. I just checked the time. It is like almost five o'clock. Where the heck has this day gone? I really thought I was going to be done filming this at like two o'clock, three o'clock. Okay, pot options. I don't 100% know what's going on in here. Either if it's not like a ton of roots, I'm going to put it back into the same size pot or if it's a good amount of roots, this would be my preference. I also have this Russo pot extender collar, which I could use possibly and I'll explain it as I'm doing it. 
So first we just have to expose the roof. So let me just show you the plant up close again so you can see why I want to repot it so badly. So when I purchased it, it already kind of looked like it was declining. This is one of the nicer looking leaves. It's such a pretty anthurium. But some of the older leaves were yellowing. I feel like, okay, so there's like a big live root here. But I feel like I might see like little bits of dead roots as well. And I've been training it to, to be used to a little bit more of like a wet environment. As in like never drying out. Because this is in like pure lechuza pond. And Jose never kept a reservoir in it. So from day one I started to keep a low reservoir and I started to increase it, but I never let that reservoir run out. So I feel like by now, kind of gotten used to that kind of routine. But the issue with the repotting is that because there's this little offset here, it's kind of low down. So I can't really repot it as deep as I'd like to. I was really hoping that these roots above the substrate would have activated and grown into the, the substrate by now, but it hasn't. So that's where the collar might come in. But the first step is just to get it out. I'm just going to dump it into the strainer just to make it easier to rinse. Okay. Well, that's why it wasn't growing. So as expected, there's tons of stem. This was grown from seed and it's never been cut. So the stem goes all the way down to here. So I actually probably could get a little butt cut from it. Um, there's also a lot of what looks like dry rot. Some of it looks like wet rot, but if you look up here, I don't know if the lighting will permit, but these roots look like just kind of flat and deflated. This is the same thing as my Dark Phoenix Ralph Lightham Fort Sherman, where like there are so many activated um, growth points. There's another one down here I can see. Okay, so here's my dilemma. I know that if you chop a plant that's a flowering age, it's not going to stop it from flowering again soon after. The same thing happened with my Carla Bivep. I chopped it and immediately flowered. My Wenli chopped it, immediately flowered. The issue is that this might prolong the, the speed at which it could then again become a mom. However, if I look at the roots, a lot of it's gonna be chopped off anyway. And that very healthy root, this one here, is connected to the top half of the stem. So I could, I could take a cutting for sure. I'm going to text Charmaine right now, very quickly. Anyways, while we're waiting for an answer, let's clean up these roots. I'm being like a lot more conservative about chopping as I normally would because it's not just my plant. So we can just chat while we're waiting for her answer because I, I do want her approval. She responded. Charmaine said, you have my permission to do what you feel is best for our child. I mean, like, look at the stem. After I removed all the rot, it's not like I am taking a huge root system away from the top of the stem. So there's a growth point here. So the root I want to make sure is attached to the top is here. And there's an active growth point here. I think, let me get my nice shears. I think I can cut it here right above this active growth point and be able to capture this little stubby root, whether it's not gonna do anything or not, I'm not sure. And I'm just gonna freaking do it. Oh, I'm sorry, Charmaine. Ooh. And then the bottom could possibly be cut again. Yeah, I think this can be cut again. One thing to remember though, is um, as the farther down the stem you go, the more like a seedling the new growth will be. So this, middle piece I expect will grow and mature much quicker than this piece, the tip of the carrot. But we're gonna do it again. I'm just gonna quickly scrape off some of the dead sheets and stuff so I can possibly locate auxiliary buds. Okay, there's two definite ones that I can see and one is almost kind of active. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Growth point right here. There's also another growth point right here. So I can actually get a cut in right in between and the middle cut will be able to have this root. So this is like way smaller than I ever cut my anthuriums, but I think we can make it work. There's also this one. 
as insurance. And then on the top, um, we have all this stem. I really hope it takes well to tree burn soil. And we're gonna pot it back up into the square pot. As usual, I'm gonna do some LECA. I'm just gonna do a thinnish layer. Oh, another mini life update. I'm, so, I'm kind of pretty sad about this, but like not enormously sad. Um, we cannot go to the UK this summer like we planned. We were gonna go to Scotland. We were supposed to go to the British Open because we got tickets. But honestly, the flights are just atrocious. And last year we were able to do it because I, I basically used up all my my points for our flights and I just don't have the points this year to get flights. So it's gonna be like a, a crazy amount of money. <sighs> this is really annoying. Do you see these two petioles? It's like stopping the plant from going any deeper. I'd love to cut it so I can actually plant it deeper, but I also don't want to jeopardize it being able to bounce back. Like I really want this leaf to be like a pristine, beautiful leaf. I don't know, maybe I'll go into the diagonal like this. So it's on the diagonal part of the pot and just try to push it down a little bit. That's I think the best I can do. Anyway, so yeah, um, the flights in July, early July, end of June, all that, it's all the same. It's all like peak summer season. And the only reason why we would be going to that is for the golf. Like, it's not like I love summer. You guys know I hate summer. I cannot stand summer. And it's like so much more crowded. Um, everything's just busier. So it's like my least favorite time to travel. It just so happens that both years we were gonna plan to go to Britain in the summer. So we've decided we're probably gonna go later in the year when it's like way cheaper. And it'll just like cost less to probably go around because we're not just gonna stay at home. We're gonna probably go around. I'd love to go to Scotland. Like I still wanna go to Scotland, but not during the summer when it's gonna be crazy busy. I mean, he told me that Edinburgh would be insanely busy in July. I know the fringe is in August, but I'm assuming that everywhere, every big city in the UK is going to be busy. Last year we were in London during Wimbledon and I just, I, I hated it. I hated the crowds, the traffic. So I'm sad, but also kind of looking forward to being there during like fall, winter. And also that means that I don't have to be away from my plants in the middle of summer again and be worried about them dying. I was honestly, the whole time we were there, I was like half expecting my neighbor to call me and say like our house caught on fire because it's so dry outside and your grow lights set everything on fire. So it's a little bit of a relief. If we're like saving so much money on flights, that just means more money to put towards doing stuff while we're there. So I potted it like this. The growth point is right here. Oh my gosh, you can't see it. But it is poking up above the substrate, so I will be able to still see it. It still has the ability to grow out, but it's a lot more buried than it was before. So now I just have to inoculate this thing with straight white. I'm actually gonna go like ham. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. I'm going more than I what I normally would do. Like this is very dark. I honestly probably should have just sprinkled it dry on the roots had I thought of it, but I'm just so used to doing this. It's just like I'm on autopilot. But I'm giving this a nice deep drink that still feels really light. That's better. And then for the stumps, I'm trying out a new little cup. You guys know how like, I usually have those like rounded yogurt cups? I'm running out of them. So I ordered these off Amazon. I think they're 5.5 ounces, but it comes with a little dome lid. And is that not perfect? It's probably not that versatile. Like it's only good for like very small cuttings with not a lot of roots. Cause if I had like a full on root system, it wouldn't fit in here. But I figured this will be okay for like germinated seed sets in the future or basically stuff like this. Now I feel like I can just do tree fern soil. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that this is not rot. This feels, no, that's rotten. Okay. 
This feels okay. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna do like, like a, almost like a single layer of tree fern, not tree fern, leka. And I'm just gonna make sure that the tree fern that I get in here is like very fibery and airy. I'm gonna just like hand pick bits of substrate that is very tree ferny. How excited are you guys for spring? <laughs> Personally, I'm like pretty excited, so I can only imagine how excited some people are that don't love winter as much as I do. The thing that gets me the most excited is whenever I go to a garden center and it's springtime and it smells like soil. That gets me super excited. And also like the forest behind my house, when the things start to wake up, there's like new baby leaves poking out. And at one point, the whole forest will smell like cinnamon. That's one part of the year that I really look forward to. And I'm looking forward to like getting back into my veggie garden because last year I really um, slacked in that department and I could never harvested my potatoes. I want to see what's even down there. Um, I probably want to plant something else. I think I want to plant red potatoes this year, but honestly, I'm just going to like keep my expectations low for what I'm going to be able to commit to. So I'm not going to plant anything that requires me to like do anything um like my carrots I didn't harvest them early enough so they turned like literally I didn't know that carrots could do this but it turns into like rock on the inside it's so hard you could not cut through it so I'm not doing that again one thing I'm not looking forward oh okay <laughs> duck Dougie <laughs> okay so it's, it's the Dougie show now <laughs> My boyfriend's home. All right. Are you calm now? Okay, this one. Make sure that it's right side up. I am going to kind of suspend it a little bit because I didn't callus and I normally don't callus, but if I have the option to leave a little bit of airflow, I will. And I'm also not gonna like pop the dome on for a day. I'm gonna pop these lids on tomorrow just to give it a bit of airflow. The bottom, I'm not worried about the bottom callusing because I didn't cut the bottom, but this one for sure. But I will put them both into my tent. So at least they have like humidity in the air and the warmth. So you can see this one is kind of like elevated. There's a little bit of space down here and the growth point is right here. So that's what I'm going to keep it, what? Yeah, right here. That's what I'm going to keep an eye on. I'm just give it a bit of great white. Again, not a ton, just dampening the substrate. <laughs> I just pray for my babies, me and Charmaine's babies. Dougie came to say goodbye. You wanna say goodbye to the camera? You came running over. Anyways, this video started out as a plant tour, then turned into a repot and chat. I don't know what to call this, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.